uh, Tony Kent, and this is another episode of Tony Kent Writes and Cross-Examines, although there will be very little cross-examining going on in this episode because I'm just quite frightened by the person that we're speaking to today, who is uh, Katarina Diamond, the author, the Sunday Times best-selling author of The Teacher, The Secret, The Angel, The Promise, The Woman in the Water, uh, Truth or Die, don't want to miss that one, and um, her upcoming standalone Heat Wave. Kat, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you for inviting me, Tony. I don't know why you're afraid of me. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we, won't get, we won't get into that. <laughs> uh, so, Kat, um, I was uh, just obviously reading out the, the succession, the, the long succession of books, beginning with The Teacher. Um, they are all in the DS, Adrian Mills, DS, Imogen Grey series, correct? Correct, yeah. Uh, and the heat wave, I think, is coming out in June. Is it still June or has it been pushed back for the uh, for COVID-19? Still June? No, nope, it's still in June. Okay, and that's a standalone? Yeah. Yep, that's my first standalone book. Okay. Well, let's, um, I'll come back to that in a moment, but I thought okay. I'd ask you a little bit about um, about the series, first of all, the... the is it, the, is it the sort of Miles and Gray or Gray and Miles? Who's the main one? Uh, I think they call it on Amazon, they call it the Image and Gray series. Yeah. So she seems to be the main one. Well, I was reading through your various, um, on your uh, agent's website, where the, the, the way it was written up, and it seems to keep jumping around. So I wasn't sure, and I suppose chauvinistically immediately went down the Adrian Miles route. Uh, they're all set in Exeter, right? Correct, yeah. Is there any reason to, uh, that you chose Exeter for, for a long series? Uh, well, I used to live there, and uh, I don't know if there are any more, but um, I think when you're, yeah, when you're like a teenager, you kind of explore places a bit more when you, when you grow up. So I just know it a bit better, I think. Yeah. And you've moved on, though, to the heat wave as a standalone. Is that set in the same area, or is that somewhere else? It is actually. It's set in the town where I went to school, so uh, in where Sidmouth, in Devon, again. And uh, I think what I read said you grew up in Western Supermare. Is that that right, or was that, is that not right? I was born. In okay, and that's I was not born there. I was born in Western Supermare. Right, which isn't a million miles from Exeter, is it? No, it's uh, about an hour and a half. Oh, right. Okay, that's that's a lot further than I thought. My my nan and granddad moved to Western Supermare when I was a kid, and it was like the, I think it was a way to stop giving them the enormous brood of grandchildren money because we never got to see them. It was <laughs> that's miles and miles away. <laughs> um, anyway, the one thing I wanted, I wanted to ask you about the teacher because there's something that I don't know about the teacher. I've and I only learned today, which is it won the Hotel Chocolat Award for darkest moment. I think it got nominated. I didn't actually win it. I can't remember ah. who did win it, um, but I, I did get nominated for that. So, so tell us quickly what, what the teacher is about and then tell me what the darkest moment was, because I didn't even know that award existed. Uh, it's, it's kind of about a, a series of elderly men start dying through horrific medieval torture means in Exeter. And it's... Um, the darkest moment was when uh, one of my men uh, gets uh, tied to a tree and injected with something to make him go numb, and then his guts are pulled out on a like um, it's called an intestinal crank. Uh, so right. you have a flame under it; it rotates, and gathers the intestines. Is that and a real thing? He was uh, conscious. Well, it was. It's not anymore, but it, it <laughs> medievally speaking, yeah, it was one of those things. I don't think they did it very often, but it definitely happened. Was that when they really didn't like somebody? Yeah, well, they were all pretty horrific, to be honest. While I was researching the teacher, I was just blown away by how messed up medieval torture is. So, uh, I mean, you see things like Braveheart, which, which look bad. Uh, and then you realise that they actually really toned that down from what really happened to him. Yeah, exactly. 
yeah, some of it is crazy. And and even though it that book gets quite dark and horrible, and I don't shy away from the details, there were some things I just couldn't put in there because they were too horrible even for me to explain. So. Mm. So the series that followed then, we've uh, the teacher was followed by the secret. Is that right? Yes, that's yes. correct. And then the angel and the promise, etc. Was was that a particularly dark series, or was it, or was the teacher just a particularly dark um, episode in the series? I think I'm I'm quite that way inclined, to be honest with you, Tony. I, and my See, this is why I was afraid to take of out a lot of the stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, my editors try and sort of calm me down a bit because I sort of go all out sometimes and uh, some crimes are just horrible and you've got to describe them that way, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a very dark series. Now, and um, are you finished with the series? Because you've moved on to Heatwave now or is that just a, uh, is that just a little holiday? It's a, it's a holiday. I've got another standalone that I'm writing at the moment which should come out next year i think uh and then i'll be back to the series i don't think my readers would forgive me if i left it where i left it in woman in the water it was quite a horrible ending so yeah. i need to go back and fix that <laughs> I, I remember reading some reviews for woman in the water when it first came out and they were uh it did seem to be a, a, a you know a fairly extreme um extreme episode in the, in the series yeah, uh, it was something I planned to do from the start of the series. Um, so I'd been leading up to it. Um, and it, I think it's probably on one level the darkest of all of the books. But yeah, um, but yeah so uh, yeah, I've had a, I've had very, very positive response to it. I was expecting a lot more negativity than I got. And I, I've only had a couple of reviews where people have objected to what I did. So. Yeah, I know. As I said, the, the ones I review were, were incredibly positive. It's, it's a very, very well reviewed book, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I've been really happy with the reviews for that one. And in terms of Heatwave, that comes out in a couple of months. Um, are, are you are you all ready for the launch of that? Are you ready for the release? Uh, yeah, I, I really struggled to write it because I missed not writing my usual characters. Um, but um, now I, now that I've got a bit of distance from writing it, I feel quite positive about it again. But uh, right. yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to to see what it does. It's been very positively reviewed on NetGalley already. I've got yeah. 114 reviews already, and mostly positive. So and it's great to get some I'm positive reviews on NetGalley. And that's the thing with NetGalley, yeah, isn't it? You can get, yeah. Like, it can be a you know a, a bit of a poison chalice. So to get to, to be mainly positive on there is fantastic. It's a great result. So what, what's Heatwave about? Um, it's about um, a girl, uh, a woman lives up in the lakes and she sees a news report of a girl going missing in her old town where she went to school. Mm -hmm. And she has information about the crime. So she needs to go back and find out how it's happening again. And so it's about her going back and revisiting the town she grew up in. And she's got a lot of secrets and mm. there's a lot of things she's afraid of finding out about herself and about what's really happening. So. And where's was, was the inspiration for that particular one come from? What, what made you want to write a, a, a different book, a different non-series book? Uh, I think it, when you write a series, it's quite hard to keep going with the ideas. And, and I was writing two a year as well. So it's sort of your brain gets a bit clogged up. And I think you just need a break to sort of miss it again and, and think, I mean, since I've not been writing my series, all I can think about is what I'm going to do to my poor characters next. So, um, I yeah. So I've 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 actually I've already started writing my next series book as well as my next standalone. So I work quite quickly. So yeah, that's what you, you need to. That's an awful lot to take on. So yeah. When we were arranging these um, these interviews, I sent around a number of questions 
um, which I've kind of asked some people, some of them and some people, almost none of them. But I thought I'd, uh, I'm very interested to try to get the, the one question to everybody, which is this one. Um, music, books, film or sport, which one would you say is, is your big inspiration? Um, well, film and TV, probably for me, um, probably earlier, you know, years and years ago, books were definitely more prevalent for me, but as I've got older, I just watch a lot of TV <laughs> and, yeah. uh, because I think it's a very a much faster medium, and I I watch TV while I'm writing as well, which a lot of people yeah. don't really understand. But yeah. I have the TV on all the time, so hmm. I, I I never have the TV on while I'm writing, but I have music on while I'm writing, so I, I understand that sometimes some ambient sound is just helpful, isn't it? I find if I'm not watching something while I'm writing, I just leave. <laughs> <laughs> so if I've got some on as, well, as the writing, I'll just stay. I'll just stay to the end of the episode, and and then I'll yeah. get more work done that way. Otherwise, <laughs> so it's like it's like having a really good, interesting view. <laughs> yeah, I'm very now, respectable. The, the other the other two things I'm, I'm going to ask you two more of the questions. Um, one of the questions is a bit of a two-parter, which is what's your last meal? What's your, you know, your, your, your final dinner or last supper? Um, but more importantly, the more important part of that question is, um, who did you murder to be having a last supper? So um, without being too libelous or slanderous, um, who is it would be the victim if there had to be a victim of the uh, Katrina Diamond murder? I mean, almost anyone, really. I'd kill anyone for food, so. <laughs> um, but if I, had one person, um, if I had to pick one person, I'd probably pick Ed James, you know. Okay. The author. Yeah. I'll hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him that when I speak to him tomorrow, but I, I have a feeling he won't be that surprised. I'll tell him <laughs> yeah, I don't think be yeah I've, I've got to be if I asked him who you said you'd kill he would be able to pick that one himself <laughs> we'll see what he's got to say about it okay the last Thank question you. then no, no, no. the last question we've got two minutes left um, the last question is just so you know I, I, these are 15 minutes and under because we're trying to get them on Instagram uh, and they have a rule about timing uh, so the last question that, um, of the ones I sent you is this Apart from adapting your own work, so apart from adapting the Gray and Miles stuff, um, if all the stars aligned and you could work on any project, what would that project be? Um, if I could work on anything, I'd want to work on Doctor Who. So on Doctor Who, you're a big I'm fan of Doctor mad Who. Mad Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, my, my, my publicist is a Doctor Who fan. I, I, I never understood Doctor Who. I'm not being rude about it, but I've never understood it. I never really watched it, which is probably why. My publicist is a big Doctor Who fan, and we were yeah. in um, we were in the BBC Centre in Manchester, and there's there's a Dalek there or a TARDIS, and I think I made a disparaging comment that you would probably kill me for. Uh, I can't remember what I said. I, th I think it was very minor, um, and I don't think she's ever spoken to me really since. <laughs> it's like absolute. Right, that's the end of that relationship. It's very seriously. <laughs> I know people say it very seriously, which I yeah. haven't understood. <laughs> so I don't take any TV show quite yeah, that seriously. No. <laughs> so we've been Doctor watching Who. Doctor Who every day. Right. And which which Doctor Who would it be with? Who would you be? Who would you be working with? David Tennant, I suppose. Maybe yeah, he, Matt Smith. But yeah, David Tennant seems yeah. to be regarded as the best one. Yeah. Maybe. David Tennant seems to be the one that everyone likes of the modern ones. He just, it felt like he left too soon, I think, mm. more. Yeah. Well, I've just, I've just seen the time, Kat. Uh, yeah. As I said, 15 minutes absolutely flies, unfortunately. So uh, to get this onto Instagram, I'm going to have to say goodbye. Thanks very much for taking part, and I'm glad the microphone worked. <laughs> See you.